what are you nerding out about now? Jeff, I think you're kicking this one off. All right. I mentioned it earlier. My wife and I, we've been watching Planet of the Apes. Uh, Cause we were having a discussion. And we were like, I don't think we've watched the new, the newest one. Well, and definitely not the one that's in theaters now. Um, and so we, we started working our way through them. Um, I think my biggest complaint about it is that none of the human characters stick around for any of the sequ- the sequels in any of the movies, but you know, that's a minor complaint to have since well, it's mostly it about the, the apes. Original series. Except, yeah, well, the original series didn't. This one, you get in the new series, you get some ongoing characters. Only the apes. It's called Planet, Planet of, of the, the Apes. apes. I literally want? said that he, some of the human characters that didn't st- they they're not yeah, the I ignored that, that Planet was just, Earth. No. No, so, uh, no, but they they were quite not good. Planet of the Naked Apes. That's off of LimeWire, and it was really uh, a mistake. Yeah, I can send it to you, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. My biggest issue is, what was the third one? War? I think it's War of the Planet, War of, the of, the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Um, we've been watching them on Max, and Max doesn't have the correct subtitles because none of the sign language is subtitled. And so, yeah, so we, we ended up borrowing um, the Blu-ray from my in-laws and it had the subtitles for the, the sign language, but uh, yeah, we were very disappointed with Max on that one. You don't know MSL monkey sign language. Sure don't. What the heck? (laughs) Because every, every country has their own sign language. So, (laughs) <laughs> Maybe they couldn't translate it because nobody nobody knows how to sign MSL. <laughs> Apparently not. I mean, it uh, sounds sounds solved. plausible to me. The font is but, in bananas. Is that... But <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. Well, so I, I I googled it and I was like, are there supposed to be subtitles? And they're like, yeah. But I also went down a rabbit hole. Apparently, a some, monkey hole. Some of the <laughs> some of the screenings, depending on which language. You, uh, the the movie was in even in the theaters didn't have the sign language for the monkeys oh, so oh, it sounds like, like what well, it wow. sounds like uh it, fox because it was fox well i guess disney might have done the slaves one um but it they messed up it sounds like for giving people the the subtitle track but then we went uh, we went back and we watched the mark Wahlberg one because my wife had never That's seen it. it oh buddy and i, and I saw that it was a good theaters, premise dude. no it was an i saw okay it in premise. theaters yeah i saw it too oh, i like man. it um, i liked it it's a good premise but it, i i will definitely say that the series that they're doing now is is better and more along the lines of the original oh dude uh, if you that... say so because i've seen the 1968 one and this one doesn't... Well, as far as story, I mean, I don't know. It's just the way they do. Yeah. But but um, speaking of the older ones, uh, we, <laughs> uh, my wife oh. now wants to watch the older ones because she's never seen them. The five movies. We probably won't go into the animated series or the the TV series. I but... mean, after the third <laughs> one Jesus. in the original, you really yeah. You're so you're, you're 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 doing. It's like it's Dune. Like watching all these subplots and reading these subbooks. It is Planet of the Apes. It Please is. Don't but, watch the originals, man. Like we gotta at least watch the the first one. Uh, uh yes, I will they, give you that yeah, for, yeah. for can't be cultural, you know, moments, right? They, they get especially four and five get super weird. Oh yeah, but, it's horrible. It's like it reverses but, it again, and the humans are back. It's, it's bad. It's dumb. Yeah, it, it gets super weird, but she's never watched them before, and so I, I think I think she should have that experience at least once to see sure, how weird yeah. they were. So <laughs> I saw I saw the Tim Burton one in theaters, and then when Mark Wahlberg kisses the lady monkey at the end, uh, I, Helen uh, Helen Bowman Carter, dude, full full movie theater, right? And there's that kiss, and I was just like, oh, bro. <laughs> the whole, you know, this is 2001, right? I'm a, I'm a freshman in high school, right? Or like oh, a sophomore, no. and the entire movie lost their mind, which completely they went t- bananas. T- oh, oh God. you ruined it, Joe. You ruined it. But like, so like when Rise and Dawn came out, I was like, Nah, dude, I'm good. I don't need to watch these silly monkey movies. And I sat down and watched them, and like. The human element and the storytelling in these new ones was just like, 
what the heck? Uh, I was blindsided. I didn't see and, it. I didn't see it coming. And like, yeah, the first two I are the only two, two I, I've seen. I didn't see war yet. Um, and I plan on seeing kingdom when it hits some sort of streaming service, but like, it's a lot better than it should be. And it upsets yeah. me. I don't yeah, well, know if I've seen more yet. Yeah. Like I said, it's on, it's on max, max but they don't yeah. have the, they don't have the subtitles on max. So. Amy, good gorilla. Like what more <laughs> do you need to know? Bud? <laughs> that, yeah, man, crap. Uh, you said that that was to a point that Joe had, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, Game Boy Advance, Phil. Oh, that's dude. a nineteen fifty-three well, device. Okay, sure, doing? yeah. Uh, so I am a retro streamer, but I'm also throughout my entire life have been a that's retro. On Twitch.tv slash Sloppy Boy Summer. That's right. It, it's all right. Uh, is there a? Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Is there a way to capture the can Game I, Boy? Can Advance? I get my story out, Mister? No, you can't. Literally. So, um. I've been collecting. Could you actually plug it in to play it? I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but... How many games do you have? So, uh, the derailment is, I can understand why Kurt only shows up every other week. <laughs> <laughs> like, he texted me a couple things. And I was like, nah, you're wrong. Nah, he right. Um, should have called in sick. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so retro collecting has gotten really expensive since the pandemic. Um, games pre-pandemic that were going for about 80 bucks are now going a roughly 280 bucks. Uh, it's gotten a little bit out of control. And so um, we were doing NES, Super NES, and GameCube for, for my whole run. And like I kind of plateaued out where I've hit all the major titles that I'm looking for. And I'm not going for completionist styles um, because it just... I don't care to have that much physical media in my house taking up space. And so I kind of hit a lull and I was you like, won't well, do digital. I, I oh, no, no, really? Okay. I thought I you were won't. a purist. Um, no, I won't. Right. I mean, for, for Nintendo products, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all, okay, it's all. Yeah. I was right. So yeah, for that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but I hit a plateau and then, I realized that I had this untapped little machine constantly. I've had it since the day it came out. And <laughs> I started diving into this a little bit more because the prices were kind of stagnant. They weren't going too high. You know, you can get a, a, a GBA game or a Game Boy game for like 30 bucks. Maybe the higher end ones are around 50 bucks. But there's a plethora of these because everything got put onto GBA, really. So I was doing a little research. And doing a little test streams. And one of the streams I do on my channel is called Stumble Through Hyrule, where we uh, go chronologically through all the Zeldas. And so we got and finished Breath of the Wild. And I said, well, heck, what are we going to do now? So I started playing Game Boy games, right? And so I picked up one of these Retron Square devices that allows you to... HDMI, your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games right into your television. So it's mm. like, well, heck, why not just run that into my Elgato and see if I can get it on there? Right? I got to do it a smaller screen than the Switch because of the resolution. And it's been wonderful for me. And it's really unlocked a lot of these old games that I haven't played or even, you know, thought about picking up. So, like, playing games like Minish Cap. Or playing Final Fantasy Tactics, uh, Advanced oh, Wars, I love right? That one. Yeah. And so, like, I have all these games that I really haven't dove into because I was always playing like Pokemon Fire or or Mario Golf or Mario Kart. And so, I've got this whole catalog to kind of go back out there and hunt for, but also bring back and play on stream. And when I'm not playing on stream, I normally have my Game Boy Advance SP right in my pocket because it's with the clamshell, it's so easy to just get in 10 minutes here and snap it closed and just keep going. Um, it's really reinvigorated the hunt for me for, for, for that retro or uh, for the retro collecting. 
Um, and my kids into it now too. Like we have a list and we'll go to local shops or we'll, you know, we'll travel an hour to go to a shop, you know, that's got a better selection. And, you know, we're, we're right. always both on the hunt for, for different things. So it's like an activity that we can share together, but there's a lot of sleeper hits on this Game Boy Advance. And it's just, it's taken me by storm. When I edit podcasts, uh, I can't not be doing something right. Uh, I can't just use a fidget cube or anything like that. So Game Boy Advance has been my thing. So <clears throat> I'll listen audibly of, of what I'm editing. And with the uh, Game Boy Advance SP, I can just hit pause real quick, return my focus to the editing, make my quick fix, and then go on my way. And it's been great. So it's literally a system that's from the early 2000s, you know, a 20 year renaissance for this, this darn thing. And uh, I'm finding new joy in places that, you know, when I played it back in the day, didn't really, uh, didn't excite me. It was just there to kind of hold my attention. So there are a few questions. Your random kid asked, what about Tears of the Kingdom? So when we started the Game Boy journey, Tears wasn't out yet, right? So okay. we, we were already into the Game Boy library uh, by the time Tears came out. We will be getting to Tears of the Kingdom at some point. Uh, I'm still hoping that we have a way to get uh, DS games on a Retron. It's still, uh, it hasn't hit its 20-year window yet. Um, and it's going to be a little bit difficult because of the dual screens. Uh, because we have, like, Spirit Tracks. We have uh phantom hourglass we have uh link between worlds we got all those games ready to go just no way to stream them right now um and yeah so there is a gba modded that allows hdmi output uh there is but they're very expensive and you gotta get them through uh back channels my retron uh sq was 80 bucks and so you so gba has uh is it, it has a, a TRS to uh, AV, is that what it is? Not your retro, sorry. Game the Game Boy Advance. What is the output? How does it connect out? I'm using the retro. There is no connect out for the GBS. Uh, so I googled it oh, and I'm oh, looking oh, at oh, it now. Actually, playing the handheld, the retro has okay. You put the cartridge in. Okay. Card in just like you would a top Look loading the, Super okay. Nintendo. For the podcast, Got it. it. Actual digital cube yep, that plugs in, and, and then you put the actual cartridge into it like it was a Game Boy Advance. Correct. So it's a top loader, and then it has just your regular Super Nintendo style uh, controller that goes with it. And <clears throat> every time it takes a little bit for uh, the the Retron to like read the entire cart because what it will do is it will download the entire cart and save it on to an SD drive inside the system. So that initial setup takes like two to five minutes, but it, you'll only have to deal with that once and it instantly loads up from then on. So do you even need to use the cartridge after that initial? You do as like a point of like, kind of like- As with a X point of X reference. Xbox, right? Uh, when you put a disc in an Xbox, it downloads the game, but you need to also have that physical copy there. The disc uh, is like okay. the unlock key. Correct. Um, and then one other thing I'm going to touch on quickly that I've been nerding out on. It's a gentleman called Sleeping Phoenix. He does acoustic covers of video game music, but just Zelda, Animal Crossing, and Pokemon music. It's all acoustic, right? And he puts out two albums. One is just him on the acoustic guitar. The second one, he adds a rain sound effect to it. So that's what I've been sleeping to every night. I'll throw on like uh, Zelda, Legend of Zelda Acoustic with Rain by Sleeping Phoenix. And it's like the most perfect chill out, get your body to like a, a, a resting state and just, you know, fall asleep. And it's been really, really dope. That's awesome. Uh, that actually kind of ties into what I'm talking about. You're talking about a little bit of that uh, self-help there by getting that good music going and listening. Uh, right now, I've been nerding out this week about some motivational things that I've been coming across uh, lately. Uh, my TikTok feed, I love the TikTok algorithm. I, I don't want TikTok to go away. I, I think it's a great, I think they've really mastered the individual 
connection to the social world. And I, I go from comedy to, to car wrecks, to a little bit of politics, to the daily show, uh, to some motivational things. And I had one come across my stream the other day and I need to start listening to this lady's podcast and actually need to learn her name, but, um, she'd come across before and she'd been talking about some parenting and how she uses the idea of let them. And she's talking about, you know, understanding what I came to understand. I think maybe you both have come to understand is that at some point you, even as they're little, you cannot force them to do anything. You can only lead them, guide them and give consequences, right? If they choose to not do what you got to do, what you want them to do, that happens. And she was talking about that some, but what hit me the other day was she took it to a much deeper level personally. And she said, let them, if, if, uh, uh, people are getting mad about politics, let them, if your company's doing layoffs, let them, if your spouse doesn't want to do the 5k with you, let them, we waste so much mental, physical, and emotional energy on worrying about other people and stuff, just letting them be that it just destroys our lives. And it really, this week, it hit at the right time to where a lot of things were going on that honestly are out of my control. I can influence some things. I can only wait to see what happens with other things. And I just, that became my mantra this week. Just let them. If they want to be upset, let them. I, I don't need to worry. It didn't need to upset me because they're upset, right? Is it something I have anything to do with? Like I'm notorious for just staying away from politics for the most part. I hate all that craziness. So, yeah. Phil? Uh, speaking of politics, Charles, I do the complete opposite. Where oh, I, have, I know you do. I have friends. Politics. I have friends on both sides, right? Yeah. Oh, you stir so, the pot. Don't oh yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got a text from um, one of my Democratic friends today because, as of recording, the debate is going on, um, and she like sends me this whole diatribe of like why it's important to vote blue no matter what you do. And it has like a, a picture of both uh, Trump and Biden on it. And I was like, these are the same people. <laughs> and then I... that's it. I turned my phone off. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because, the but that's, well, that's what I'm saying, right? Throw the grenade in the movie theater just to see what happens. Uh, because, and then I'll do the same thing to my, my Republican friends, right? Where they'll argue all these like things. And I'll be like, yeah, but just to rile them up because <laughs> you're you're right. There's no point, right? We're we're never gonna change anybody's mind on anything. Yeah, right? let them think what they want. <laughs> let think. them do their own thing, unless you want to be a raccoon and just be crazy and stir the pot all over the place. Well, yeah. Sometimes you gotta let the raccoon. There, I don't have a good one. I'll let it be. Um, but it's interesting enough. I'm. Uh, we know a little bit of my history. If you're new to the show, preacher's kid. I turn my back on religion, uh, not, not like atheist, but it's a long story, but there's a lot of crap that humans put into things. But the thing that's been popping into my mind lately is I've learned over the last couple of years working with staff and, and people that thought were really bought in and I'm spending hours trying to educate them, show them, motivate them, coach them, you know, do things I love to do. Right. And it's not totally falling on deaf ears, but it was, it became apparent that I was wasting my time. And the Bible verse thing popped into my head. You know, those who have ears, let them hear. And that's been a, a mantra of mine as well. Just to say, I'm not going to waste my time on people who aren't listening. Uh, kind of like you two, where you froze your cameras, went off and get alcohol. I get it. It's fine. But uh, <laughs> you were, it was just great. I look up because I'm thinking about it. I look up. You're both in the same position, frozen, not even blinking at the camera. Um, oh, <laughs> the Ed Phil, your party foul. But anyway, my point is. You can only, you can only influence what you can influence. You can only be who you can be. And I love, I, I might age myself. I think it's a 1990s movie, but there's a movie called Sneakers with uh, Robert Redford. And it, it was cheesy. It was whatever. But here's what I love. Phil, you know, I see your life. You know it. So, Joe, movies are this thing that people watch when they go outside of the house. So, yeah, normal yeah, people, sneakers, you know. Yeah. Sneakers was one oh, of those. It, it's not where they've got the band in front and the, the, yeah, the, the it, moving bud. picture is playing while the band well, is playing. That's the Muppet show, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but what I loved about Sneakers to this day was James Earl Jones was the best character 
almost of all time because his power was so subtle. And I don't remember the quote. I just remember he always spoke softly. He always talked about how he didn't have to raise his voice. And at the end, when they're asking him something, he's basically like, if I have to tell you I'm the power, then I'm not the power. And he just kind of smiles. And it's not that's not the quote, but that was the message he got from him. It's just he's just quiet. He just goes, I don't have to tell you I'm in charge. I'm in charge. And he leaves. And I've like, I've always wanted to achieve that. And that's kind of where I'm at today. I'm trying to achieve the that piece where you can be you're being upset doesn't make me upset. What fact can I help you with? Or what can I change? Well, I yeah, dude. I mean, because a point of view that I have, and uh, it it took me going, you know, to heck and back to figure it out. But like, I can't please the entire world, and no matter what, there's people out there where I am the villain of their story, right? Right. And there's nothing I can do to ever change that. So why am I dwelling and putting so much of my mental and emotional energy into it? Because there's nothing I can do, right? Yeah, um, that's probably how it is. And I just have to live with that. Because once again, nothing I'm going to do is ever going to be able to change their their point of view on me. And i'm okay with that honestly it sometimes it just feels like everything comes back to the serenity prayer change the things i can and have the wisdom or you know, leave those i can't change alone change things i can and and have the wisdom know the difference yeah 